morning, my soccer universe. Wow, that's late of games was yesterday. Uh, I saw only one game live and EE, of course, Barcelona. Uh, against Real Madrid, which can be re summarized as the headline. Real Madrid is playing, Barcelona is scoring. Um, let's get right to it. Uh, I thought that at the beginning, you know, it was actually not as great of a classical as it was uh, in the first game but because uh, it was a little bit more tentative everything you know they're trying to feel each other out we know that Real Madrid is actually in a slight advantage um, and it was kind of slowish at the beginning not 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 too much happening but Real Madrid actually having more of the initiative there was one a brief situation where Barcelona played it a little bit faster immediately Real Madrid had problems but actually it was Barcelona who had more problems with Real Madrid and Real Madrid should probably have taken the lead I mean so it was actually Vinicius Junior who was at the center of two huge chances one where he's actually running alone on goal but uh, having quite kinds of weird touches and then even his pass to Benzema who still was uh, free but had to make a quick shot kind of because he couldn't it was hard to control that should have given Real Madrid the lead and then he had another huge chance where he just took it directly and just missed the corner uh, so Barcelona was actually uh, lucky to get out of this uh, uh, first half just nil nil um, second half again, Real Madrid from the beginning is attacking, but then one counter attack over Usman Dembele, who just makes one uh, feint, uh, moves down uh, the left side, puts a cross in to Luis Suarez, who takes a direct shot uh, that goes. Uh, beyond, I mean, he's uh, beyond. Uh, Sergio Ramos, who is in the right position, but uh, probably, probably could, could be a little bit more aggressive, uh, shoots it and it goes directly. I think it went even through the legs and then uh, into, into, into the near corner. Absolutely against the run of play. Uh, Real Madrid continues to be the dominant team, uh, though. I mean, you had always the feeling that Real Madrid might get the equalizer. And Make no mistake, I was for Barcelona uh, at the moment. They are clearly my favorite favorite in Spain. Um, and also I was hoping that this does not go to overtime because it, uh, for me the game was kind of late. But yeah, uh, the game continues on uh, with Real Madrid pressing. And, then it's, uh, and having uh, chances, I mean, there was a, a big header there where Ter Stegen made a uh, great save. Ter Stegen actually was on top of his game, I think. Uh, it was as much down to him as to that it was nil-nil, uh, I mean, as to uh, Real Madrid's inability to just convert. Which is the one thing, I mean, they say Vinicius Jr. is the next Messi, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Messi doesn't miss chances like that, even as a young kid. That's has to be clearly said. And so it was another counter. I think it was again Dembele, but it was coming now from the other side. Uh, slightly offside, potentially. I don't think so, but um, it was tight. Puts a cross in and there's Suarez again. Uh, but uh, Varane clears the ball before him into the net. 2-0 Barcelona, it is more or less decided, and then they get a penalty. They should have gotten a penalty actually much earlier. There were two claims for penalty, but I think the one there where um, Sergio Ramos is taking down the Rakitic, that was a clear penalty. The other one, I think it was Lucas Vasquez uh, in, the, in, in the box between two Real Madrid, uh, two Barcelona defenders. That uh, frankly seemed a little less like a penalty, so yeah, there were two penalty calls. Then they get the penalty and Suarez makes his second. At the moment I thought it was his third, but then they showed it was a Varane own goal. Fine by me. Suarez is back on the scoring sheet. Uh, that, I think, is good news for Barcelona. The one thing that I have, have to say, I expected this to be a Messi-centric performance and it was not. Uh, Messi had kind of a quiet game. 
and there was even one counter attack where, 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 where I thought he slowed it down in the first half. But so Barcelona moves on for their sixth, seventh consecutive Copa del Rey final. That's their competition. I know Copa del Rey is probably the least important uh, one to them of the all that they won. And we have another Clásico and ah, you gotta feel, I honestly, as much as I enjoy Barcelona winning this one at the Bernabeu, and I, I don't know, Clásicos at the Bernabeu to me are a little bit more interesting than the Cup now. Uh, you gotta feel with Real Madrid, they really, I mean, they lost 3-3 three, three, so it's hard to say, but up until it was 2-0 they were the better team. They were the better team and it just adds on to the next Clásico and I have a feeling uh, the one on Saturday is not the last one we're going to see. I just have a good feeling. Okay, let's move on. Uh, another cup competition, Fiorentina Atalanta. I only saw them the last uh, 15 minutes. That was a hell of a game and I keep telling Fiorentina is fun to watch because in, they give up many goals but they also score many goals and if you've ever seen uh, Federico Chiesa play you see the future of Italian football. This guy to me is uh, the best Italian player at the moment. Uh, absolutely amazing what Lord he can do. He has speed, he has a good touch. With him Fiorentina is always in the game. And of course, you and Inter are licking the fingers to get him, and I, I really hope he stays for another season at uh, Fiorentina at least. This guy is magic, absolutely. Uh, they also were um, commemorating uh, the one year anniversary of the death of Davide Astori, the Fiorentina captain. So, big occasion, and seemingly Fiorentina was uh, a little bit off because. Uh, Within a short succession, uh, Atalanta took a 2-0 lead. I think both goals, the first one was by Gomez, the second one, I, I don't recall that. Uh, both goals kind of went through the legs of the goalkeeper. Uh, the first one was a great touch by Gomez. I mean, they, they had as much that they had to get the second one. Was, yeah. uh, look a little bit odd. Not, not sure if it went through the legs now, but uh, as far as I, I, I can remember, it was kind of a weird goal. Um, but Fiorentina came back, uh, a quick moment of not um, taking care of Chiesa, Chiesa uh, takes off, I mean he could have even uh, put the ball to the side but he directly converted 1-2 and then shortly after Benassi makes it 2-2 and we are level again and again it's a Fiorentina game that has a lot of goals and I know if it wasn't a classic, I think this would be the game that, that I, I was watching because both both teams are known to play great soccer and I feel a little bit stupid that I actually didn't watch uh, this one, but you know, it's a classic. <sighs> to me, it's a, it's almost it's a no-brainer. Uh, if I have to choose between all the games that were on yesterday, uh, the classic wins out any time. Okay, so 2-2 uh, at halftime. Second half, Fiorentina actually is better, but Deron makes a wonderful goal. I think off a corner kick comes out and he uh, directly takes it and slams it into in, in net. 3-2 Atalanta. Uh, but Fiorentina is not done and they get the equalizer. That's the one I saw live uh, where Chiesa puts it across to um, Muriel who can slot it home. Again, Chiesa. Um, Fiorentina then actually was going for the kill because in a 3 3 at home, not great result uh, all overall. But it was actually Atalanta who could have scored the fourth. They hit the bar in added time. Yes, I'm a Milan fan and I would like the Milan to win the competition, but from a neutral perspective, either one of those teams are so fun to watch that you just wish that they uh, get the trophy. So, just saying it how I feel about it. Uh, let's stay with the Cup 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 competitions very quickly in France. Coupe de France um, quarterfinals, now I know for sure. 
we had already PSG winning yesterday and now we have uh, two more, Rennes beat Orléans 2-0 and Lyon Caen almost 3-1, so uh, two clear victories for favourites. And then we can go to the Premier League where um, yeah, the big game was Chelsea Spurs and everyone looking what is going to happen to Kepa, Kepa is not playing. I've actually, I on purpose have not commented much on it uh, because I got tired of all the scandal. Uh, you know, it, it seemed to me that ev 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 everyone's getting too bent out of shape. This between Sari and the goalkeeper, yes, Sari is not a great communicator, but don't pounce on it so much. It, uh, I just have to say it's um, too much in a way. And seemingly the so Kepa was not no not playing, it was um, Caballero again after what he showed me at the World Cup. This guy should not play. I'm sorry to say. Uh, but yeah, he didn't have much to do because Tottenham had only one shot and goal, it was their own goal. Uh, but more on that later. Chelsea actually dominated. Iguain, I think, hit the, uh, had a great chance. Hit the post, maybe? I don't know. Uh, Pedro made it 1 0. That went through the legs of the goalkeeper. That was no, 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 not, no, not a Fiorentina goalkeeper. Uh, went through the legs of Ioris. Um, that shot, I'm sorry. It was a messy goal, but you know, Chelsea thoroughly thor deserved it. And Kieran Trippier, a horrible on goal. I mean, he wants to. Uh, long ball, he wants to pass it back to the goalkeeper who is coming out. I honestly have, 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 have to say, I, I never uh, uh, understood why Yoris is actually the captain of the French national team or even of Tottenham. But seemingly he is a leader, but I honestly have, have to say, uh, from a poor goalkeeping perspective, he is definitely past his prime. So that was the big one, Chelsea staying in, in, in contention. Uh, the other one is of course the race between Liverpool and City, where everyone thought kind of that Watford might be tricky. No, it was not. Mane scoring two early goals, the second one uh, with the back heel, absolutely worth watching. Great goal, Origi makes it after they have 3-0 and then two headers by um, Van Dijk. And I have to say, there were two um, free kicks what did not work against United worked very well against Watford. Yes, United is not Watford, but at least that's going 5 0. And that's a statement win. Like I, like I say, we have to see how it goes into the Merseyside derby. But I hope that Liverpool gets it together again and uh, we might go down that stretch. I, I want to see them be still in first place after the international break. That will be important. City against West Ham, uh, from what I saw, City was very uh, dominant in the first half, uh, especially at the beginning, kind of tapered off then, uh, with David Silva hitting the post. Then actually uh, Carroll had a huge chance for West Ham in the second, uh, but it was uh, City that got a penalty where, yeah, it probably was a penalty, but uh, have been clearer ones to me. Uh, and Aguero slots it home and then yeah, City plays it home safe, maybe could have made a second one. Uh, when I saw it was nil nil at half time, I had some hope that uh, West Ham gets a point. Nope, they didn't. Other results, uh, Crystal Palace loses at home to United uh, 3-1. Arsenal Bournemouth 5-1, that's a big result. And Southampton against Fulham 2-0. Which means the following, on top of the table, we have Liverpool 69, City 68 and uh, Spurs with two losses in a row, only at 60 points and now they need to look back and I think the North London Derby against Arsenal is coming up, Arsenal is sitting in 4th with 56, they again come somewhat out of nowhere, yes United had not a tough game against uh, Liverpool which meant that they uh, dropped behind and I don't think that this is all over, but yeah. Arsenal 4th place, United 55 and Chelsea 53, so that's the top and let's look at the bottom, uh, Newcastle really makes it up to 13th spot, now they have 2 wins in, in, in a row and maybe that gives them some uh, peace, Crystal Palace and Burnley uh, both have 30 points and then I think they are still safe and then is the relegation zone 
where um, Brighton 27 Southampton now moves out of the relegation spot, also with 27 points. It's Cardiff 25, Fulham 17, and uh, Huddersfield 14. And from all I could see, yes, I mean, from Austrian perspective, uh, I would like to see Huddersfield uh, succeed, but if I had to choose between Southampton and Fulham, I would choose Fulham. I gotta be honest that uh, way. Uh, but yeah, I think that Cardiff, Fulham, and Huddersfield will be the teams rele relegated. It really seems like it. So, that was yesterday's action. There's a little bit of action today. Uh, Copa del Rey second semi-final. Uh, return game between Betis and Valencia. I think it's played in Valencia, so that will be uh, very interesting. And yeah, and then we're all getting ready for the big weekend. There will be many, many great games, honestly. So, curious about that. So, I'll park right here. There is quite the commotion parking was already here. But yeah, let me know which games you watched and whether you if you saw the game that I saw, whether you agreed with my assessment there, or let, 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 let me know in, in the comments what you thought about the game. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.